goals this year are we're similar coming into the season as, as we have in previous years. We want to put ourselves in a position to compete for a conference title and, and hopefully that will put us in a really good position where we can make a deep run into the NCAA tournament. Um, there might have been a few more expectations. Um, yeah, we had a goal to win conference, win the conference championship, and obviously we wanted to make a deep run in the tournament. Uh, as a team, we, we wanted to win conference in the conference tur tournament, obviously, and we wanted to make a run towards the national championship, but we came up a little short. The pointers started out strong in the game against Lawrence University, with Trevor Haas scoring all 12 of the team's first 12 points in the form of four three-pointers. Uh, it was a great feeling to start out the season that way, to see them all go in. And it gives you confidence going on in the season. You know, it was a great start to the season. Obviously, it got everybody kind of fired up for the season. And, um, you know, we knew that Trevor was going to have a good year, and that was just kind of a, kind of a wake-up call for him. Yeah, Trevor has had a, a tremendous year, and he started off right away in that first game at home against Lawrence, where I think the only miss that he had from the field was a, was a foul shot. Toward the end of the game, the pointers had 99 points. They had two foul shots at the three throw line, but the first one was missed. Well, I don't think you know, we were had the goal of scoring 100. That was probably more disappointing for our, for our fans than it was for us. Uh, I mean, we weren't really shooting for it, but once we got close, we were like, oh, let's go for it. But unfortunately, it just came up one point short. Um, well, I wasn't in the game, but we had some of the younger guys in there, and we were all pulling for them, but uh, you know, some t they just couldn't quite get over the hump, I guess. The Pointers' defense allowed Lawrence to have 73 points in that game, which they were less than enthusiastic about. We knew they were a really good offensive team coming in. Lawrence is always really well coached, and, and they can put five guys on the court that can pass, catch, and shoot, and they're extremely skilled. And we were going to be challenged defensively, and that certainly was the case that night. They they made shots, and, and they made us look bad at times on the defensive end. You know, luckily for us, we were pretty darn good offensively, and and, and shot an incredible percentage from the field um, uh, that gave us that victory. Um, you know, it was a, it was a lot of points for us. We didn't want them to you know get that many, but uh, at the same time, we were scoring at a high rate too, so it kind of evened out, and we still got we we came up with a win, which was most important. Uh, obviously it's not how we wanted to start out the season, but we knew we had things we had to work on each or during the season to get better, and we started to learn from it. In the Edgewood game, they improved their defense with a final score of 80 to 45, increasing their final score difference from 26 to 35. Well, each year we want to try to be the best defensive team that we can, uh, not only in our league, but hopefully one of the better defensive teams in the country. And Lawrence, you know, taught us that we had a long way to go to to make that happen and our seniors you know Tyler and Trevor and Clayton they wanted to make sure that we got better that next day in practice and that we needed to get back to who we were and that's being a good defensive team and and you know we were better against Edgewood it had a little bit to do with them and it was their first game playing so they might have had some jitters and you know they didn't play particularly well on the offensive end and they were much better later on in the year but we also did a much better job um, make a defense uh, a priority in that game um, on the road. Um, I think defensively we just kind of settled in a little bit better. We got the first game jitters out of the way and we really just buckled down and um, we turned them over and got rebounds and we scored out of our stops also. Continuing their winning streak, they went on to play UW-Whitewater at home. Despite being a very difficult team, the pointers were able to get a 29-5 run over the course of 10 minutes in the first half. At the end of the first half, they led by 20 points. They turned the ball over a little bit and, and we were able to make some shots and, and put together some strings on offense where we scored three, four possessions in a row and then on the defensive end we were able to get a couple stops and if that happens you can you know, build a lead from 8 to 10 to 18 you know, pretty quickly. Um, we played pretty good defense. Uh, we kept them all in rhythm and we were hitting our shots which helped a lot. A series of turnovers in the last four minutes of the game resulted in points lead being cut from 20 to 12 as they close out with a final score of 79 to 67, but they still win. In their next game against Whitewater, the halftime score was 39 to 27, in which Point was losing. In the second half, the Pointers caught up with the Warhawks with a score of 40 to 38. 
we just talked about um, being better with the basketball on the offensive end where their pressure was bothering us and we were turning the ball over and rushing a little bit and then they were also able to really control the paint um, against us they were scoring pretty much at ease um, with, through their two post players and we did need to do a much better job controlling the paint in the second half and we were able to do that we were able to you know take the lead and um, but they made some big plays down the stretch and um, to come away with the victory in overtime we we didn't play very good defense we let them get a lot of layups in the first half which caused us to be down such a great amount and we came out after halftime and uh, tighten our defense and we hit some shots which helped out. You know, we just wanted to kind of settle down. We, we knew that we could get back into the game. We kind of calmed down, calmed our nerves and just said we wanted to chip away at the lead slowly and, and that's kind of what we did and eventually gained the lead. Regulation ended with a tie at 69 points and they got upset in overtime with a final score of 81 to 76. Their only loss in the regular season. Uh, we just didn't execute when we needed to, didn't get the stops when we needed to, and they just hit big shots when they needed to. Um, we didn't make our free throws, we turned the ball over and we didn't get stops, and um, those three things are what it takes to win a game. We were not very good uh, defensively. We had, we had a few mistakes defensively guarding the ball screen and, um, and also giving up a, an open three, um, a rhythm look. And then on the offensive end, we um, struggled um, just to make the big plays down the stretch. We, you know, missed a foul shot, missed a layup, and um, you know, long story short, is they made the plays down the stretch, and and we weren't able to come up with them. The success resulted in them getting a bye week in the WIAC tournament. In the semifinals, they beat UW Platteville 66-47, and in the championship game, they beat Whitewater at home 74-57. In the first game of the NCAA tournament, they played against Marion University, where the halftime score was 35 to 30 with a Marion lead. But the pointers weren't that surprised. Uh, it was great. It was it was a goal that we had in the beginning of the season, like Trevor said, and um, you know it's just it was a great feeling to overcome that and to, to be able to do it in front of our home crowd. It was uh, it was a great feeling. No, well, we knew that Marion was a really good team coming in. I think some casual fans might have just thought by the strength of our schedule and being ranked number one in the country for really the, just about the entire year that we should have walked away with that game. But we knew that Marion was a team that not only um, proved for three months that they were the best team in their league, they also then proved by winning the conference tournament, their conference tournament, that they were playing the best basketball of anybody in their league at the end of the season. And um, for them to come in here, they really fed um, our tremendous crowd and it took them to a new level and, um, and we we didn't play a great game at all and you know, uh, their coaching staff would admit that they played an outstanding basketball game and, and they put themselves in a position to win and we were fortunate enough to, to come away out on the, the winning end uh, of that first round playoff game. Uh, we knew they are a good team coming in. They came in, they played really well and we took their best shot and Luckily, they didn't, they didn't hit that last shot to beat us. Um, yeah, a little bit. We knew that they were a good team, and we knew they were going to come out with nothing to lose. But um, uh, I was surprised at how aggressive they were and how um, how well they played together. They executed well, and uh, you know they really took us to the end of the to, until there was no time on the clock. That's what it took. They did manage to come out on top in the second half to make the final score 66 to 64. They won their next game against Central with a final score of 76-71. In their next game against Endry, both halves have ended in ties, 28-28 and 64-64. A good three-pointer at the end of the game resulted in a pointer loss of 73-76. to Well, we just weren't playing very good basketball from the start. We, we turned the ball over um, early in an often against them. And we weren't real comfortable attacking their zone. And, and that led you know, to some poor play down the stretch, but it just wasn't the last few minutes that um, that put us in a position to lose that game. You know, we didn't we didn't start very well. Um, there was a, some few stretches there that were able to build the lead, but again, they they made some great plays um, 
down the stretch and, and knocked in a couple of rhythm threes uh, against us when we had the lead. And um, we just weren't able to, to capitalize and hold on to that lead that, that we were able to earn there down the, down the stretch in, in regulation. Uh, we didn't execute down the stretch like we needed to. We missed a couple shots. They hit a couple big shots, and we just didn't make the plays that we needed to to win that game. Yeah, you know, um, we, we got it enough to be able to break it into overtime, but, um, you know, we just couldn't get over the hump. They hit shots when they needed to, and, and we missed shots when we needed to make them, and that, that really was the difference in the game. I mean, it, was, it was a tough, knowing that much great year that we had, and it came down to us losing in the Sweet 16 to Emory. It was obviously tough, but looking back on the season, we can look back and uh, talk about the great things that we did. Oh, it was tough. You know, we all had high expectations. We expected to go a lot further in the tournament, but um, at the same time, you want to reflect on what a great year we really did have. And it, was, it was a tough, knowing that much great year that we had, and it came down to us losing in the Sweet 16 to Emory. It was obviously tough, but looking back on the season, we can look back and uh, talk about the great things that we did. Well, it was obviously a disappointment uh, because we just felt that we had some unfinished business and um, being led by three tremendous seniors and a really good group of, of juniors and, and sophomores who um, proved for three months that we might have been the best team um, in the country, um, being ranked number one since the first part of December. But that's basketball where in the NCAA tournament, it doesn't matter if it's Division One, Division Two, or Division Three, that uh, you're going to play really, really good teams from that opening night like we did in Marion and, and certainly in the Sweet 16. If you don't come with um, you know, your A game, you're going to put yourself in a position where you can be beat, and, and that's what happened uh, against Emory. And our seniors were obviously disappointed, and, and our underclassmen were disappointed for those seniors. And, disappointed for themselves because we were one of those teams that thought could could not only get to Virginia but you know, potentially um, had the opportunity to, to win our fourth national championship here at Stevens Point and you know, bottom line is we just weren't able to get the job done.